Well, let's lift our hands to the Most High God and worship Him. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. Give Him adoration. Bless the King of Kings. Bless the Lord of Lords. Praise Him. Give him all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration that God has kept you alive to see another convention. Give him glory, give him honor because he's going to exceed your expectations joining this convention. Give him honor, give him adoration for journey mercies for those who have already come. And thank him in advance for those who are on the way because they too will arrive safe and sound. Give him glory, give him honor. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Alpha, Omega, Alpha, Omega, you are worthy of my praises today, you are worthy of my praises today. Hallelujah. Lord of Lords, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the ending, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, the Almighty, wonderful Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, our Savior, our Healer, our Deliverer, our Provider, the Lover of our souls, the soon coming King, glory be to your holy name. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for the previous conventions. Thank you for what we've done in the past. 
We thank you for what you did yesterday. Thank you for what you're about to do now. And thank you in advance for what you will do this week. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight, my Father and my God, we have gathered together unto you. We are trusting you for mighty things. Please, Lord, do much more than we dare hope for. Those who are yet on the way, bring them safely, Lord. And at the end of everything, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Now you are going to start by prophesying to two people or three, say, my neighbor, I love you, but during this convention, my miracles will be more than yours. You go ahead, prophesy to them. I love you, my neighbor. We're drawing this convention. Right? My miracles will be more than yours. If you believe your prophecy will come to pass, shout hallelujah. <laughs> Please be seated. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. I thank God for every one of you here. Uh, taking a look at the auditorium, <laughs> I think uh, by tomorrow we have to keep the three by three open so that those of you who might not be able to find a seat by tomorrow. The three by three will be open for you and you'll be able to follow us clearly. Number two, we want to do something we've never done before. Beginning tomorrow morning from 8 a.m till whatever time. Tomorrow is a day God has set aside specially for healings. And so all the senior pastors will be here before 8 a.m. And they will line up in front of you and everyone who needs the laying on of hands they will lay hands on you tomorrow so that long before Friday you will already have your testimonies uh, I don't want to talk about sanitation report today because uh, we are just coming. But as from tomorrow, we'll be announcing those who are cleanest and those who are dirtiest. So make sure that even before you sleep tonight, you tidy up your surroundings. I have some good news for you. <clears throat> As of uh, 6 p.m. this evening, the number of babies already born at our maternity center here is 21. Uh, 
this is serious. Seven boys, 14 girls. <laughs> so, let the girls shout, praise the Lord. And let the boys shout, hallelujah. Don't worry, boys. We will catch up with them. <laughs> Glory be to God. Ah, it's going to be a great, great, great convention. A convention none of us will ever forget. Tonight, I've been, I've been speaking to you very briefly on beyond salvation my text will be Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 19 to 23 Hebrews 10 from verse 19 to 23 Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. we want to talk about beyond salvation we could visit it from two different angles we could say well salvation is step number one and then after that comes sanctification Salvation means your sins have been washed away. Your files have been cleared of all queries. Everything is clean. Sanctification means that ability to sin has been removed from you. Your heart of stone is replaced with the heart of flesh so that you now have the ability to live in such a manner that there will never be another query in your file. And then we can move on and say after sanctification comes baptism in the Holy Spirit and then go on to dedication and on and on and on please if you are not hearing clearly clap so hard the engineers will locate you but I just have to go on and uh, the Almighty God will help you and help the engineers in Jesus' name. But then I, I would rather want to look at the topic from another perspective. 
that when you are born again, you expect certain things. The number one of which, of course, is that you miss hell and you gain heaven. John chapter 3, verse 16. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, will not go to hell, but will have everlasting life, will go to heaven. And then salvation confers on you several other wonderful things. I mean, for example, Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Say, so, therefore, if, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Salvation confers on you a brand new beginning. When you are saved, it doesn't matter how terrible your past has been, that's gone. When you have a new beginning, all things are passing away, all things become new. So you can get a new name, a new name written down in glory. In John chapter 1 from verse 11 to 12. John 1, 11 to 12. He came unto his own, his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to be called sons of God, children of God. So when you are saved, you get a new name. You used to be called the son of the devil. They used to call you Babake. But now you are a child of God. A new name. When you are born again, you get a new accommodation. Colossians 1, from verse 12 to 14, Colossians 1, 12 to 14, made it clear, salvation gives you the privilege of being translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of this dear son of God. You move from out of darkness into light. Salvation brings you under a new management. You are under the management of Satan, but now you are under the management of Jesus Christ. Matthew 11, from verse 28 to 30. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Where he say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I give you rest. Get away from your old manager. Come unto me. And then he says, you now take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And he emphasizes it that my yoke is easy, my body is light. You come under a new management. 
But there are more benefits far beyond ordinary expectations. Because you are saved by the blood of Jesus, according to First John chapter one verse seven. First John chapter one verse seven, the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses from all sins. Because all your sins have been cleansed drawn in salvation you immediately have access to the mighty arms of God Isaiah 51, 59 verse 1 Isaiah 59 verse 1 he said the hand of the Lord is not shortened that he cannot see the hand of the Almighty, the everlasting hand of God. It's not shortened. The hand is mighty. It can, that arm can do anything. And you have immediate access to the ears of God. The same Psalm, 1, Psalm 59, if you read it from verse 1 to 2, the arms of the Lord is not shortened that he cannot say, neither is he as heavy that he cannot hear. But the problem has been your sin. Now your sins are gone, washed away by the blood. So immediately, immediately after salvation, you have access to his arms, you have access to his ears. Which means you have access to answered prayers. According to Psalm 65 verse 2, Psalm 65 verse 2, He said, O thou that heareth prayers, unto thee shall all flesh come. Moment you're born again. The moment that blood washes away your sin you have unlimited access to answer prayers but that's not all because of that blood immediately that blood washes you clean you have victory over Satan. Because Revelation chapter 12 from verse 10 to 11, Revelation 12, 10 to 11 says, they overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb. That blood that conquers Satan becomes available to you. The moment you are born again, you have access to protection from death. Because you read Exodus chapter 12 and read it from, well, read it from verse 1 to 23. But specifically, you may want to read verse 21 there. Exodus 12 from verse 1 to 23. Verse 21, they said, the Almighty God has given an assurance that when death is passing by, when he sees the blood, it will pass over you. Many of you are alive today because the blood protected you from coronavirus. And I have the assurance it doesn't matter what else is coming. That blood will keep on protecting you.
But then there's something even bigger. In the text that I read to you, in Hebrews chapter 10, if you read verse 9 there, verse 19, Hebrews 10 verse 19, the Bible tells us that because of the blood, that blood that gives you salvation, you have access to the holiest. You know, if you ask those who know the Bible very well, they will tell you there is a place called the holiest in the temple of God. Only the high priest can go there once a year. And when he's going there, he will be going with the blood of an animal that has been sacrificed. And when he's going in there, they tie a chain around his leg and bells around his feet. So that as he's walking about in the holiest, if he makes the slightest mistake, he will die immediately. So when they don't hear the jingling of the bell anymore, they use the chain to pull him out. So the holiest is a very sacred place. You don't, you don't just go there unless you are the high priest once a year. But the Bible now says, if you are saved, washed by the blood, you can walk into the holiest. In case you don't fully get the importance of that, let me give you a little illustration. By the grace of God, I have gained access to many heads of states all over the world. And when you want to visit a head of state, when he wants to grant you a private audience, whether you are the one who requested for it, or is the one who invited you to come, ah, you have to pass through many gates. Gate number one, they want to check whether your name is there somewhere that you are expected. Gate number two, gate number three, gate number four, gate number five. Maybe by the time you get to gate number six, by then they would have taken your telephone, everything, and then they, they usher you to a room and you find some other people who have been there before you, who have been waiting maybe for one hour or two. And, and you think, ah, well, I'm almost there. But then there, <laughs> there will still be gates. The first time I visited the head of state, I came back thanking God that it is easier to see Jesus than to see the person. I don't need to go through any gates. If I need help, the moment I say, Jesus, I'm in the presence of the Most High. If you know what I'm talking about, shout hallelujah. Imagine that you are traveling on the highway 
top speed and suddenly one of the tires of your car bust and the car begins to some some assault and you have to pass through gate number one gate number two gate number three before help will come the moment the car begins to some assault what do you shout Let me hear you shout that name again. And immediately, help comes. The moment you are born again, washed in the blood, you gain access to the holiest. And you gain access to the name because you are saved by the blood of the one whose name is Jesus Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 Matthew 1 21 and say his, his name shall be called Jesus because he shall save his people you have access to a name that means Savior and because you have access to the name, you have access to dominion. Because it is written, Philippians chapter 2, from verse 9 to 11, Philippians 2, 9 to 11, that that name is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, all knees should bow. The moment you are saved, you get recognition in hell. Acts of the Apostle chapter 19. You can read from verse 11 to 17. Acts 19. 11 to 17. God started doing some special miracles in the life of Paul. And he's going to do special miracles in the life of somebody during this convention. And some people try to copy him. And they said, in the name of Jesus Christ that Paul preaches, devil come out of this man. The devil said, Jesus I know. Paul also, I know. But who are you? You may not know it, but the moment you are born again, head knows. Witches and wizards, they know. They know you are different now. They recognize you. But uh, because of time, the moment you are born again you have access to a great prayer partner who is called the Holy Spirit and the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 26 Romans 8 26 he says we don't even know how to pray correctly but the Holy Spirit will help our infirmities during this convention you are going to pray correctly so part one of my discussion it's going to lead you to one very special prayer when the time comes very soon. I may those of us who are already born again sure that the blood had washed us clean. And that prayer will be an apology to God. 
apology that you have been living below expectations that you have not made use of all the privileges available to you that you have been wasting the powers abilities that salvation had made available to you Your story will be like the story of somebody that they said bought a ticket to travel by sea to a foreign land. He bought the ticket, got on the, sh on the boat. Um, when he was boarding, boarding the boat, he took a lot of biscuits with himself. And every time throughout the journey, he was just eating biscuit and drinking water. Until somebody found him. What's going on? We have not been seeing you in the dining hall. He said, I don't have money to buy food in the dining hall. They said, ah, the food there is free. It's included in the ticket. Some of us are born again and eating biscuits when the Almighty God has prepared a buffet for you. We are going to need to apologize to God that we have been wasting a lot of blessings that belong to us as a result of which we will go angrily after all those benefits and in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we will get them all back but that's part one that is part two. Don't worry, I, I will soon finish. You know me, I can't preach for long. I've told you again and again that if the Bible teaches anything at all, from all the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is that nothing goes for nothing oh salvation is free because Jesus paid for it with his blood now you are born again what are the expectations of God from you because we have come waiting to receive from God miracles beyond expectations but he is also <laughs> expecting certain things from us For example, in 1 Peter chapter 1 from verse 18 to 19, 1 Peter 1 from verse 18 to 19, the Bible says, because you are bought with the precious blood of the Lamb, you are a very expensive commodity in the hand of the Most High you are bought not with silver and gold but with the blood and he says God expects you to glorify him with your body the moment you are born again you are no longer your own you have been bought not with silver and gold 
but with the blood of the lamb the, your body is not your own God expects from you that you don't use your body just anyhow so when you hear somebody say I can do whatever I like with my body you know that fellow is not born again because your body is not your own you are bought with the precious blood of the lamb and so God expects from you according to 1st Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 18 to 20 1st Corinthians 6 18 to 20 that from the moment you are born again you flee every form of sexual immorality because it's not your body <laughs> you can't do what you like with your own body anymore because it belongs now to the one who has paid your dowry and the Lord Jesus Christ He expects you from the moment you are born again translated out of darkness into light He expects your light to shine Matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16 Matthew 5 14 to 16 He said the moment you are born again you become the light of the world and your light must shine so that people will see your good works and give glory to your father in heaven the one who bought you with his blood he expects you through your action your words your evangelism to shine the moment you are born again it says you are no longer ordinary you are now the salt of the earth and among so many things that salt does is that it destroys corruption salt is what you use when you don't have fridge and you want to preserve fresh meat you rub salt on it to keep flies away keep corruption away salt is a fertilizer it can be used as a fertilizer to cause growth salt of course is to make things sweet the word of God says the white of an egg has no taste until you add salt to it and he expects you to be the salt of the earth to be the destroyer of corruption in your place of work When I was younger, everywhere we go, those who want to do evil, they hate us. Because they know that our presence will not allow them to operate freely. We were the salt. Thank God some of us here. He says you will either 
do the work of salt or you'll be thrown away. The word of God made it clear. In Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 to 9, Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, that you are saved by grace. You didn't work for it. God out of his infinite mercy chose you for salvation. And don't let, don't let me ever hear you say, when I found Christ. Christ was not lost. You are the one who he found where you are lost. Don't let me hear you say, oh, I'm the one, I'm the one. I chose to give my life to Jesus. No, 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 no. It's out of his mercy. He said it clearly. Nobody can come to me except my father draws him. You'll be surprised tonight now that in spite of all the benefits that I said are available to those who are born again, when I make the altar call, not everybody who needs salvation will come. Those who come are those that the Father in heaven will draw to Jesus Christ. We were many the day I gave my life to Jesus Christ. We had the same sermon. Something pushed me forward. Because when I joined the Redeemed Christian Church of God, I had a problem and I wanted the problem solved. And they told me if you get to this church, oh, their prayer is fire. So I came ready to pay for their prayer. And they kept on telling me, surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Forsake your way of sin. And I was saying, what's wrong with these people? And most of the people then were not highly educated. And I, I was a university lecturer. I was saying, what, what do they know about sin? I mean, just uh, you want to call having fun sin. What did they know about uh, philosophy and so on? But a day came and the preaching was on and something deep down within me said you say these people are not educated they don't know philosophy they don't know psychology Look at their faces. They have peace. Have you? With your PhD. Something within me says, look at them. They're not asking you to surrender to them. They're asking you to surrender to your maker. The one who controls your future. If God does not push you forward, you won't come. That night when they gave the altar call, I ran. And today, I'm grateful to God that I ran. Because somebody pulled me. So you are saved by grace. Not by your own work. But God does not expect you to abuse that grace. Galatians chapter 2 from verse 20 to 21. Galatians 2, 20 to 21. Say, yeah, you are saved by grace. 
Uh, you must know you are crucified with Christ. And you must not frustrate that grace. Because I know you have heard all manners of preachers saying that, oh, once you are born again, uh, yeah. grace will cover any other thing. You can do whatever you like after that. The word of God is clear. You cannot continue in sin and expect grace to abound. God forbid. God does not expect you to frustrate the grace. God says in his word that once upon a time you are like a dog. I'm not the one who said so. Matthew chapter 15 from 21 to 28. Matthew 15 from verse 21 to 28. Remember the woman who came crying to Jesus Christ, asking for healing for her daughter? Jesus told her, I can give the bread of children to dogs. Two categories of people. Children and dogs. But the day you gave your life to Jesus Christ, the day Jesus saved your soul, you became a son. You were a dog. Now you are a son. And he therefore does not expect you to go back to your old ways. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 to 22, 2 Peter 2, 20 to 22, he may declare, only dogs return to their vomits. God expects from you that once you have been washed in the blood, once grace has brought you to the Lord Jesus Christ, once you have said all oh, things are passed away, that all things have become new, you will never go back. Because to go back to one, any of those things that you, you said bye-bye to, he said, I may say, your dog has gone back to his vomit. You know what he says will happen? It doesn't matter who is the professor who has been telling you all kinds of things about how you should live after you are born again. God says, you return back to your vomit, you will be kept out of his kingdom. Revelation chapter 22 verse 15 Revelation 22 verse 15 he said without our dogs all dogs all backsliders all those who became children and then returned to their vomits outside our dogs The Almighty God expects you as a child of God to redeem time. The time that you have wasted. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16. Ephesians 5, 14 to 16 asks you to redeem your time. You have wasted so much time. Do something. He said, because the days are evil. Maybe you didn't understand the drama that the, the children presented. The drama shows you one problem, 
after another problem, after another problem, after another problem, until Jesus returns. The, the days are evil. And it's going to get worse before it gets better. It's when the, when the Lord returns. When he returns, it's then there will be peace because he's the Prince of Peace. When he returns, that's when all problems will be gone. And those of us who belong to him, of course, we reign with him forever and ever. But he wants you to act quickly. Quickly. Why? He said, because I come quickly. My reward is with me. To give to every man as his work shall be. In Revelation chapter 2, from verse 1 to 5, Revelation 2, 1 to 5, he said, hey, I know some of you have tried, oh, you have worked, but you have left your first love. You used to love me more than anything else. Now, You love something else. Your love for me has withered. You say, hurry up. Get back to your first love. So I don't come and take away your light. He wants you to act speedily. Mm-hmm. I know some of you are not expecting this kind of preaching tonight. But if we don't lay the foundation, you will miss the blessings of this week. And I don't want you to miss any of them. And if I don't tell you the truth, who else is going to? You are my children. And when I get to heaven, I want to see all of you there. Days are going. Remember what the Bible says in Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. Joshua 13, verse 1. The Bible says Joshua was old and stricken in age. And God said to Joshua, Joshua, you are old. You are stricken in age. And you have not completed the work I gave you to do. Before God draws the curtain. Before he says no more. There's nothing more you can do. He wants you to wake up. I'm talking to those of us. <laughs> Who are sure of our salvation. God oh, expects a life of spotless holiness from you. He expects that you keep your body pure and holy. Because you are precious to him, bought with the blood of the Lamb. So your prayer number three will be, Lord, thank you for preserving my life till today. I will redeem time. I will go back to my first love. I will serve you beyond expectation. It's so just one little story. And then it'll be time to pray. It's not a story you have not heard before. 
that I believe God wants me to tell you. I told you I was praying through us one Congress. And all of a sudden I heard God say, Son, give me your two cars. One, and I had two cars there. One was a Nincon Town car, the other was a Lexus Jeep. It was feeling good. I want to travel off roads, I take the Jeep. Smooth roads, I take the town car. Son, give me your two cars. I know his voice. But I said, God, that can be you. I began to tell him what is written. What your word says is that if I have two coats, I'm to give one out. Now you're asking me to... <laughs> I have two cars. You have me to give both of them. told me something that I've never told anybody before, I'm telling you now. Do you want your blessings to remain usual? Or do you want to go to the unusual? You want to stay within expectations. Or you want to go beyond expectations. You know the result. I don't want my life to be ordinary. You know, we've been talking about that. I don't want to be an ordinary pastor. I don't want to be an ordinary Christian. I don't want the natural when I can have the supernatural. I don't want the ordinary when I can have the extraordinary. What about you? So when it's time to pray, you're going to cry to God and tell him, from this night onward, let everything about me be beyond expectations. But before we pray, I've spoken to those of you who are out there and you are not yet born again. You know it because you are still living in sin up to maybe yesterday. But the blood is available still to wash away your sins and give you access to the hand of God, access to the air of God, access to the presence of God, access to victory over the devil, access to all manners of blessings. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, if you are ready that you want everything to become brand new if you are ready to truly truly say bye bye to the devil welcome to Jesus if you are ready to say bye bye to your old master and you want Jesus Christ to take over I'm going to count from 1 to 15 because I can see that some of you are very far away. Before I say 15, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you must be standing before this altar, coming crying to him, asking him to have mercy on you, to save your soul, 
I'm, I'm not talking of coming casually and no, no, no. You really mean business. You want an end to a life of sin, a life of shame, a life under the control of Satan. You run forward now so that I can pray for your salvation. And I'm counting one. Now, Jesus is not begging you to clap for him. So if you want to clap, you clap. Don't insult him with your casual clapping. He expects greater things. Two. Three. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Okay, those of you who are still coming, keep coming, keep coming. Make sure you get here before I finish praying. Those of you already in front, cry to Jesus Christ. Tell him to please save your soul. Tell him, I don't want to have anything to do with the devil anymore. I want to be a child of God. I don't want to be a dog. I want to serve you for the rest of my life. Have mercy on me, wash me clean with your blood. And the rest of us, please, let's stretch our hands towards our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them. Pray that the Almighty God will save their souls even as He saved your soul. Thank you, Father.
Hurry up, those of you who are coming, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up, hurry up, those of you who are still on the way. I want to pray for salvation now. Thank you, Father. Just keep coming. Make sure you get there before I finish praying. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. My Father, my God, I want to thank you for your word. And I want to thank you for your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. Your children have come to you now, my Father, my God. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Have mercy on them in Jesus' name. Let your blood wash away their sins in Jesus' name. Save their souls tonight. Write their names in the book of life. Receive them into the family of God. Give them brand new names. And from now on, any time they call on you, please answer them by fire. And don't let them ever go back into the world. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Now those of you in front, I rejoice with you because I can assure you by the word of God, because you came and because we prayed, you are born again now. So let me hear you shout hallelujah. And then I want to assure you that from now on, I will be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer request. The counselors are already around you. They will give you cards. I want you to feed the cards and return the cast back to them. And I promise you, I'll be praying for you. Now, the rest of us. The rest of us, we are in two categories. Category one will be those who are backsliding. When it is your own time to pray, your prayer tonight will just be, God, please take me back. I want to come back to you. I've returned to my vomit, but no more. The rest of us who have been kept by the power of God all these years, we are going to pray. Number one, you will thank God for preserving your life, even to today. That's your prayer point number one. In case you want to write it down, you want to thank Him that He has preserved your life. To this moment. Prayer number two, you are going to apologize to him that you have not made full use of the benefits available to you as a true child of God. Tell him, I'm sorry. I have not made full use of all the benefits of salvation. Now we change. Number three, you are going to call on the Almighty God and say, By your grace, from now I will serve you beyond expectations. 
my light will shine my salt will be effective everybody will soon see my good works and they will glorify God on my behalf and finally you will lift up your voice to him and say father from tonight onward don't let my life be ordinary move me to a level where people will look at me and say you are different you are superior let the people see in me a life beyond human expectations let's go ahead and pray don't forget tomorrow eight o'clock you want to be laid hands on for healing come here the pastors will be here and we lay hands on as many people as I need of healing remember word of God says if two of us shall agree concerning anything we ask on earth it will be done for us by our Father in heaven. The pastors will be here before 8 a.m. And they'll be willing to lay hands on everybody if need be. And the Almighty God will grant all your requests. Now it is time to pray. Um, we can't wait for the counselors to finish. But if any of you want to come forward to the space left at the altar to pray, you're welcome. The altar is open now. And cry unto God until you are satisfied. And God will grant all your requests. God bless you.